this powered diesel powered swing arm that you can mount to a go-kart, a mini bike to make a trike or pretty much anything you want to power. This consists of a one inch live axle with four inch by four inch hubs, a 40 series torque converter, and of course the 10 horsepower diesel engine that I've done a few videos on. We made this completely from scratch. The plan with this thing is to mount it and put it on a bunch of different things to make it powered. And it's also gonna be diesel powered. Maybe in the future we'll try other engines, but just for this project, it's gonna be diesel powered. It's made out of inch and a half square tubing. So enjoy the build process. And let me know what you guys think in the comments. That's gonna be our axle. Come on. All right, guys, so I think it's finally time to build something with this 10 horse diesel. This is 418 cc's. I got it off of Amazon. I've had it for quite a while now, and I haven't really done anything with it other than put it on a generator and made some power with it. Really just messing around, though. It wasn't really ideal for that just because it's kind of overpowered for that. In another video, I showed you guys that we could fit a torque converter on this. So now that I know that it can fit, we can 100% use this to power something. But before we make that something, we actually have to build it. I'm going to start by going through my metal rack to try to find some square tubing in order to make a frame of some sort. And we're basically going to build a whole frame from scratch to hold the engine, the axle, and the torque converter. And it's going to be a frame that I can attach to the rear of something. It'll be like a swing arm, essentially, that I can just power whatever I want with. So I'm going to start digging out some material, see what I can find, see what we can come up with. I'm trying to do this on a budget, so I don't want to have to go out and buy anything. And I think I have enough scrap pieces laying around to make this happen. For the actual motor plate, I have this really, this is like 3 8 thick steel plate. So I might try to use this. It's going to be very difficult to work with because how thick it is but i think it'd make it really sturdy so that's probably gonna be our engine mount at some point i'm gonna put the engine on this mark the holes out drill everything out and then have to slot the hole so i have some adjustment for a chain tensioner there goes midnight but yeah anyways i'm gonna go ahead and start laying this metal out see what i can find i do have a bunch of material over here but this stuff's real thin it's 14 gauge and i think i'd rather use something a little bit thicker i do have some real thick flat bars so that'll be useful I also have this weird thing back here, and I might end up cutting this up and trying to use some of that material because it's also very thick. All right, so here's kind of a rough idea of what I'm getting at, and I have this piece and the band's all getting cut now. So it should give us roughly this much room for a tire and wheel. And then to mount the pillow blocks to this piece, I'm going to put some flat bar, put two holes, so it'll bolt here, bolt here, and it'll be welded to this side off it, or on the bottom or whatever. And then that should give us plenty of room back here for different sprocket sizes as well as a disc brake. And then the engine will sit right about there. I'll put the plate on. The plate will probably mount to here and there for, I'm going to try to gusset it and support it as much as possible. You guys will see more of that kind of once I start to get it more together. But that's kind of the idea. So I'm gonna get a rough frame kind of tacked together. Once I get a full square done, then I'll know where I can put the motor plate and then keep going from there and build up from there. But that'll be kind of my foundation. This is inch and a half square, 11 gauge tubing. So it should be plenty strong and I'm gonna gusset it really good just because this diesel engine does vibrate a lot and it does have a lot of torque. I would like this to be as strong as possible. So yeah, so far so good. All right guys, this is kind of the end of our first fab day. I very loosely have the frame fabbed up. It's just tacked together, but so far I think it's gonna be really strong. Once I'm confident this is how the layout is going to be, I'm gonna take some of this flat bar right here. I'm gonna cut it into like four inch pieces. And then that's gonna get welded right here and right there on the other side of those pillow blocks on each side. And that's gonna support the pillow block bearings. We're gonna measure from the rear of the tubing to the pillow block to make sure it's all square. And then we're gonna put a piece here and here and that's where the motor plate's gonna sit. That way the torque converter and the chain and all that can line up. And I'm probably gonna end up putting another support on this bearing as well, just to keep the axle from flexing. And because I already have the bearings, I might as well beef it up as much as I can just to make this really strong. I'm not quite sure we're going to put this on just yet. I'm kind of making this up as I go. But my goal at the end of this project is to have a really solid swing arm that we can attach to things that has a good engine set up already ready to go. And I want to paint it and I want to make it look all nice. So you guys will kind of see that as the build progresses. But this is what we got so far. And so far, so good. I think this will be plenty big. At first, I was kind of afraid it was going to be too small. But I really do believe this is the perfect size. And we should be able to put whatever engine we want and kind of go from there. So yeah, pretty uh, pretty good with that. I got it all squared, it's mostly flat. Basically when I put it on the ground, it feels like it's pretty flat. Now I'm gonna go ahead and finish weld the whole thing and just kind of mocking it up. I put the axle, ooh, and kind of just. So imagine this is like pretty much upside down. Y'all can kind of see the idea I'm getting with to hopefully make a super durable swing arm that we can mount on mini projects. So like I said, I'm gonna get all that welded up. Then we're gonna start cutting up some of this inch and a half by quarter inch thick flat bar and that's going to make bearing mounts out of that and just basically going to go piece here and a piece on the other side with bolt holes drilled and it's going to be welded to this that way this is going to be nice and strong same thing on that side and then we're going to do the middle bearings once i put some bar in the middle and that's also where the engine mounting plate and all that stuff's going to go i do still need to get a disc brake set up that way i can have brakes on this thing but we're probably not going to do that right away knowing me
All the welding is done. It's welded on every side and in the middle. Now I'm gonna take an angle grinder with a flap disc and kind of clean it all up and make it look a little bit better. And the frame should be complete. All right, now we're gonna cut the bearing supports. So I've already cut one and then I'm gonna use this as a template and I'm gonna make a total of four of these. Actually, I need to make a total of eight technically because I have four bearings, but I think we're gonna do four just for now. And we can make the rest later. Ooh, that's hot. How did I touch that? I'm an idiot. Whew. I think this blade's pretty much waxed. I like butter. All right, now I'm gonna do something kind of crazy. I want all four of these to be literally the same exact size. So I'm actually gonna tack all these together to make one brick. That way I can face this side and face this side to make them perfectly flat. And all of them are gonna be exactly the right length. And then I can also drill the bolt holes as well because each of these has to have two holes. So if I do it as a giant brick, when I go to cut the tacks apart, these will all be the exact same. So I think that's the best way to do it. I want these to be as close to perfect as possible. Let's see how that works out. It's not gonna show up really good on the GoPro, but you can already see there's some inconsistencies with how they were cut, just because I was using a bandsaw by hand and I want these to be perfect. So that's the reason for me doing that. And there we go, we're left for one big brick of metal that's all welded. It's all tacked together. I'm gonna chuck this up in the bandsaw. We're gonna cut this face flat, cut this face flat, drill our holes, and then we'll, that's it. Then all we gotta do is cut the tacks apart, do some finishing cleaning on these, and then bring over here and start to get them all kind of mocked up on here and get them measured out and perfectly square with the axle bearings. Oh yeah, look how perfectly flat that is. I'm gonna do the other side now. Okay, so our bearing block mounts are completely bandsawed on either end, so they're perfectly flat. Now I'm going to go ahead and drill the holes through these in order to mount the pillow box. And then once two holes, right, one right here and one right here are both done drilling, then we're gonna cut the tack welds and these should all be uniform and perfectly the same size and dimensions. And then I'll do a little bit of finish cleaning and get them all ready to be welded on our main frame and get the bearings bolted on. So we're gonna get this Get these holes drilled because this is one inch of steel I have to drill through twice. And then a little bit of tech tip, I get some whatever I have kicking around the shelf oil and I get a tiny little paintbrush and that's what I use to lubricate the drill bit. Slow and cool is the name of the game when you're cutting through metal. So just keep that in mind. You don't want a ton of RPM. You want to keep the bit as cool as possible so it doesn't work hard in your material and just take your time and drill. All right guys, we got our holes drilled. Took a little while, but Good to go. So now I'm going to cut these tack welds. We're going to do some finishing work on these brackets. Then we're going to get them bolted to the bearing and start mocking them up on the frame. Okay, guys, got the brackets bolted to the bearings. As you can see, they're just loosely put on there. And then I went ahead and measured from here to here to make sure that distance is exactly the same on this side as well as this side. I got that all good. So I'm going to snug these up a little bit more and then I'm going to go ahead and tack weld each bracket. So each of these are gonna get attacked. Once I'm sure it's not gonna move, once I'm sure I'm happy with the position, I'm gonna fully weld it, and then that's it. The axle mount should be completely done. I may end up putting more plate here to strengthen this, but I think just for now, this will be okay. It'll be plenty strong, and then we can move on to making the motor plate. Then the frame itself should be done. We should be finished welding and fabbing and just... Alrighty guys, axle. Bars are mounted and good. I don't know if I said this before, but I'm using the titanium flux core welder. That is the best flux core welder in my opinion, and you can build anything with that. Hopefully everything's square. I did measure twice, measure, measure twice, cut once or whatever. So it should be pretty square. I'm just gonna take the flap disc and clean some of the boogers off. Like I said before, then we're gonna start on making the motor plate. I have a thick piece of steel, but I need to slot it. 
Not sure how I'm gonna do that yet. Maybe use the plasma cutter to make that job easy, but now I'm just gonna go ahead and probably put the axle on and just test fit it, make sure it's everything's a-okay, -okay, and then flip it back over and start doing the engine stuff. I gotta go find some more tubing in order to do that. It's starting to take shape, as you guys can kind of see. I guess I'm gonna keep chugging along. Here's some other projects I'm also working on. I actually gotta get this car out of here completely and reclean the whole garage. Probably between me building this and actually finishing it, the garage hopefully should be a lot cleaner. I normally don't show this in my videos, but I'm gonna start doing more vlog style stuff anyway, so y'all are gonna see it more anyway. But yeah, I'm gonna get the frame in here and keep going. All right, these are bolted on, axle spins nice. Axle spins nice and freely. I don't have keyways for nothing yet. This is gonna be our engine mounting plate. As you can see, it has no holes in it besides these, but that's not gonna be correct for the diesel engine we're going to be using. This is one quarter inch steel, so it should be plenty strong. I don't want any flex or bending or nothing. Like, none of that from the vibration. So now I need to bring the engine in here. We need to put the engine on this plate, mark out where the holes are gonna go, get the holes made, and then get some more metal. So this is gonna kind of sit roughly like that. All right, moving right along, guys. I got one bar mounted, or I should say tacked in place. This one is being held by these clamps. That way I can get the engine positioned exactly how I want in order to get everything lined up. I'm gonna put the engine roughly in the middle. As you guys can see, this thing is an absolute monster of an engine. Right now I'm gonna go get the torque converter and mount that. That way I can make sure I can actually get the chain and everything lined up. And once I know I can line everything up, then I'm gonna actually fully weld these bars. Then we gotta put the plate on, drill the holes and do all that stuff. I'm also hoping when I go drill the holes, I don't have to drill through the tubing itself. I want the engine to be offset. That way the holes here and slot instead of here because that'd be a lot more challenging to do. So hopefully I don't have to end up moving a bunch of stuff around because I think the strongest way to do it would be one right here, one right here, kind of close to the edge. And then I can also fully weld the edge if I really want to add more strength. And then this is this clamp is holding this piece on the bottom. That way it creates a shelf for this to sit on just until I get everything mocked up. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw the torque converter on and kind of make an imaginary line of sight for the chain. I also finally got that car out of here. So I have tons of room in my garage to actually work. So it's really nice, got the AC going and we're just moving right along. All right, so that's with the torque converter on. I think I need to swap this sprocket around to put it more over here. And it should, looks like it'll line up. So imagine we have a chain going there and it looks like I can push the motor over slightly. As long as we have room between this back of the torque converter plate and this frame rail like this, we should be good. So I can actually scoot this over just a little bit. And then I also plan on putting a little support table right here in order to support this bearing. That way when this is applying load, pulling down from running, it'll kind of help support the back of this that way nothing bends or whatever. So I want to try to make this, the goal is to make this as strong as possible because I don't know what kind of testing we're going to end up doing with this. It's kind of all up in the air, but we're going to over engineer it because I don't know what I'm doing, but I do know how to build stuff. But anyways, once I kind of get this thing more set in stone, I'll bring you guys back for an update. Uh, until then, I'm just going to keep tweaking it, figure out where to put the holes. And kind of once we get this thing mounted, permanently bolted and mounted, and we can throw a chain around that sprocket, it should be all pretty easy from there. I still have to find wheels and I still have to find a brake kit. I haven't got any of that yet. I am very excited to be able to do something with this engine finally. It'll be a lot of fun to do all kinds of testing with it and put it on all kinds of crazy contraptions. And of course, I'm gonna show all you guys on this channel. So stick around if that's something you wanna see. All right, it's the next day. It's Labor Day, happy Labor Day. I had to work on Labor Day. Kind of funny if you think about that. Anyways, now we're gonna start drilling our holes to mount the diesel. So we have our plate loosely tagged. I need to somehow transfer marks to the plate, drill the holes, and also slot the holes. So I think my idea to do that is I'm gonna drill four holes to perfectly mount the engine in one spot, and then I'm just gonna measure an inch forward, maybe an inch and a half, drill another hole, make sure it's lined up like that, and then I'm gonna take my plasma cutter and cut out the middle of it, and then we should have slots to where we can move the engine around. And my plan is to make the slots a little bit bigger than what I actually need to give myself a lot of flexibility on getting the chain lined up and making sure everything is square. So I guess first I'm gonna to try to make maybe a template off the engine itself because I don't know how I'm gonna be able to get to these holes to be able to put like a Sharpie or something. All right, so what I ended up doing is setting the engine back down here and I took a bolt, dipped it in grease and made a little mark. So we have a mark there, 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 and there kind of sort of. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those drilled out, test fit the engine one more time and then drill the second hole and slot them. Got in your mouth? Let me put some brake cleaner in there. Why does it taste like that? You don't even need to, bro. That's oil mixed with water. All right, guys. So we got the holes slotted with the plasma cutter. I just got to probably run a burr bit through here to clean these up a bit. But that plasma cutter cut through this quarter inch plate like butter. So I'm going to go ahead and get this thing back in the garage, get these holes cleaned up. 
test fit the engine one more time. Once I'm happy with how the engine fits, we're gonna fully weld this whole frame and we should be done with that part of the build. And then we can move on to, I guess probably getting the whole thing cleaned up and painted maybe, but just gotta keep going and see what else we have to do. I do gotta order some chain and I do have to put the right size bolts as well as put keyways in the hubs, put keyways on the sprocket. And then I still gotta find wheels and tires. All righty guys, it's the next day. We're out here again. Every day after work, we're gonna be working on this thing. So we have the holes cut out with the plasma cutter, the slots. So now we're gonna use this carbide cutter bit. I'm gonna go through and kind of clean all these up and make them all uniform, get all that slag off, and then probably hit them with a flap wheel to clean them up further. And once I'm done with that, the engine plate should be complete. There is some more welding I still need to do. It just has a few good little spots welded right now. And there's also some more welding to be done on the frame. I did go ahead and weld that up and that up on either side. Those are all good to go. I need to cut these little things off because this is reused metal. Then we got to figure out what we're going to mount this thing on. So that's going to be in another video. More than likely, this video is going to be its own video of me just building it. And then we'll do a video of me putting this on something, doing all the fit and finish. Paint it, make it look all nice, and have something presentable. But anyways, we're going to focus on those holes and get those cleaned up. All right, guys, the frame is completely welded and done. I do have to go back and clean it all up, but I'm not worried about right that. But I'm not really worried about that right now. I'm gonna go ahead and do a full mock-up with the engine, the torque converter, everything. I did get the bolts in. And I also verified I can scoot the engine forward and back, so that's good to go. As far as the chain goes, these sprockets are 420 chain. And I was digging through my parts bin and I found this gold 420 chain. I used to have my Grom, so we're probably gonna use this and it's gold, so it'll look really nice. And all I gotta do now is find my chain breaker and a master link. That way I can get this to the correct size. Maybe I'll end up doing one in the middle. I think if it's, if it's not too much trouble. But anyways, yeah, so that's where we're at with that. I'm gonna get the chain put on. Then we're gonna put the driver on, the driven pulley, and that's it. This thing will be pretty much done. Alrighty guys, this thing is pretty much done. Torque converter's on, chain is nice and somewhat tensioned, and there's still plenty of adjustment left on the plate. So very happy to see that. And this thing should be good to go. So I was gonna make this video all one part where I was gonna build this and use it, but this video is already getting pretty long, so I'm going to make a part two where we're gonna kind of pick up from here and we're gonna have the frame all cleaned up and painted. As far as wheels go, I'm probably gonna have to use golf cart wheels. I have a golf cart in the backyard that I'm gonna steal the wheels off just for now, just to verify they fit on the hubs because this is a four inch by four inch hub bolt pattern and I believe golf carts have the same one. And if they fit good, I'm gonna buy a nice billet set of wheels with some good off-road tires. But this is pretty much what we're left with. So in theory, you could bolt this to pretty much whatever you want and you would have a diesel powered whatever with a torque converter. But that's gonna do it right now, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Let me know what you guys want to see this thing put on because in the next video, this thing's going to be put on something and we're going to be running it and we're going to be doing some testing on it. So I look forward to that. Thank you guys for tuning in. Let me know what else you guys want to see me do with this thing. Like I said, what do you guys want to see me put it on? I'll put this on whatever y'all want, a toilet, a sign. I do have an idea what I want to put it on first. Like I said, hopefully in the next video, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'll see you guys next time.